Yeah. Well, what we have as an input is a uh, RGB monocular camera, so there's yeah. no there's no depth map. And um, what we're trying to do is we're trying to get the non-rigid shape of, a, of an object from from the uh, live uh, webcam. And um, what we have beforehand is a 3D model of this uh, in a reference position, so a reference state. Um, and, and the task is to say what is the deformation of that uh, reference uh, object, which transforms it into camera costumes, into 3D camera costumes. So that's the problem. Okay? Now you can see here on the right is actually, you would say, the results. Okay? So what you see here is, this is a mesh, which is a projection of the um, reconstructed deformation onto the camera image. And you can see that your, um, you've registered it well if that mesh is, uh, is agreeing. And you can see, you know, as I'm, as I'm deforming this in quite, um, quite complex ways, um, it's, uh, it's getting that sort of deformation. So I, you can actually also visualize these results in a different way, which is to say, uh, let's view the object from a different viewpoint. Um, so this, this here is I'm just viewing it from a different viewpoint. And maybe I'll just uh, squeeze here uh, with my finger, and you can see that it's deforming mm. like that, and I let go like that. Really awesome. Yeah, mm. thanks, man. Um, so here, I'll just squeeze there. You see. Yeah. Okay. So that's that's the solution, and you can see that because I've computed this, I can then render a depth map, um, and that's what you see here. So this is like a reconstructed depth map. Um, so I don't have my connect. Uh, there's no depth map, but I can reconstruct a depth map if I if I can solve the problem. Right now, the other important thing to notice is that in order to solve this problem, we've actually got two things that have to be solved. The first is how do you match the uh, objects uh, template, which is the object you have point to the input image. Because you need, in order to, when you match points on the surface to the input image, you then have reprojection constraints on the problem. So this is the first thing you need to do. The second thing to do is, given those constraints, how do I compute the deformation in 3D? And that's quite difficult because this is a monocular camera, so you're getting 3D from 2D. Um, so you have to have some priors on how it can deform. Right. And in this work, what we're doing is we're not using a statistical prior um, because we, we want to deal with objects that deform in a very arbitrary way. Mm. Mm. Um, we are using a physical prior, which is saying uh, the uh, deformation of this can is uh, in general smooth, um, and when it deforms, it doesn't stretch or shrink very much. So that's a prior we use. So um, we, we have to match the, uh, for the first part, we're matching the object's shape to the input image. And the way we're doing that is by densely matching uh, using texture. We're not using any features because they just don't get, they're not dense enough. So if you sift or something like that, it wouldn't really work because if you, uh, if you zoom in like this, there's a lot of ambiguity, you see? But you mentioned that you have some, some way to deal with the uh, illumination effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what I'm doing is I'm actually doing a very, an illumination invariant dense yeah. matching between the object surface and the input image. Mm -hmm. And the way it works is to assume that because of temporal continuity, mm -hmm. the deformation in the previous frame is similar to the next frame. So if you render the previous frame, this is what you, this is what you get. This is a render of the solution from the previous frame. And then I'm matching those two images. And I'm doing it in a in a very parallelized way using something related to block matching optic flow. Uh, so what what it does is it actually discretizes the render into a bunch of uh, pixels or regions, and each region is individually matched to the input image. Um, and, and this is actually being done with an exhaustive image, um, not Lucas Canardi style optic flow because that gets stuck. And it would never, it would never be able to handle this stuff yeah. if you did Lucas Canardi. So there's no Lucas Canardi going on here. This is this is exhaustive, or quasi exhaustive, because you want to be at 30 frames a second, uh, because it, and it's quite expensive to do. Uh, so the trick is using coarse defined style matching, where what you do is you start off with a um, coarse discretization which are these points the in green, the and thing. then these are matched. Um, the, yeah, we do a search for, uh, within a region of about this the, much uh, um, for a likely can a match uh, the, using photometric similarity um, up to illumination change. And we do this for all these points. 
and then we get a bunch of putative matches. And then once we've done that, we also do it at, at a finer level. So this is what these points in blue are. These are these are closer together, but we're searching over a smaller range. So it keeps the cost low. So occlusion is handled um, with two ways. Firstly, because we're rendering this to the input frame, we're not matching any points that are occluded by the render. And the second point, which is um, actually um, medical uh, uh, um, occlusions with my hands and I'll, I'll just show you how that's going to actually I'll do it with a different object I hope this is clear yeah this is a wonderful demo yeah I like Thanks. it <laughs> it took me ages. <laughs> okay, so this is a different object. Yeah, this is perfect. Squeeze bottle. Okay, so we have the same setup. We have the input frame here. Mm -hmm. And what you have here in the top right is um, the projection of the mesh onto the input image. And you can see uh, that we're fitting well if, um, you know, if the... Uh, if the uh, if the mesh is aligning, and it's more or less aligning, right? It's quite robust to this sort of motion. Yeah, amazing. Okay, so um, yes, occlusions, right? So yeah. occlusions with my hands. Now you can see that as my hands go up this, you can see a lot of red points. Yeah. Yeah. Now they are um, being detected as outliers. Right. Okay. So um, those points have no matches, and so they're rejected. And we use a couple of strategies for rejecting them. Things like left-right consistency and some other things. Um, it's not perfect, and you will never have outlier free matches, mm -hmm. and so uh, you'll always have some matches which are incorrect. Mm. It's never, it's never possible to get rid of them all. And so when we work out the non-rigid shape, given those matches, we have to be robust to some outliers. Yeah. And there are some tricks for doing that using uh, like MS yeah, the, the idea is we Okay. Okay. And how about the real-time performance? Yeah, it's real-time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, on the PC. So the, how about uh, you need a good mobile GPU. or you need a good graphics card? Uh, the, good uh, graphic card. What what is good? Um, well, um, uh, <laughs> I, I'm using a GTX 980. Um, wow. So that is a good graphics card. Um, it, for me, it depends on how on, on how complex the definition is because it all comes down to this. Um, if you have if your object can deform in a smooth way. You don't need that many matches to recover the deformation. Um, so you then you don't need a powerful GPU to do the matching. What what is the consequences? Sorry. What is the consequences? Uh, no, the consequence is you require less resources from a GPU yeah. because you're matching less points, um, so it's quicker. So I but the res resolution-wise, or oh uh, well, this is v VGA. Okay. Yeah, uh, I'm actually talking about the density of yeah. those points you saw in in green. Oh, you mean the template? Yeah, yeah. If your if your deformation is really smooth, you can have a less dense match. Right. Yes. And that 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 means less uh, computation. That's true. On the on the GPU. So my feeling about mobile is that well, with current hardware, Hardware, um, it, it's, uh, it, it could be alright for objects that deform smoothly. If objects are deforming in very complex ways, you need a lot more matches, um, and actually you're dealing in a, with a high deformation space, so the optimization problem is, is more expensive, and you do need a good GPU for that. So, okay, got it. So how about the template? Uh, do you have any requirement for the template? No, no, no. The requirement is very generic. It's just a 3D uh, mesh model. Why? Because I mean, you can see that. Which is like this. Um, and this this was actually built using um, structural motion. Um, so it's, and you can see it's not perfect. It's it's a bit noisy. Um, we want to address the problem. Yeah, there you go. So this this, is a, this was built using. Um, using a different camera, viewing the object as it's sitting on a table, and uh, it's not bad, um, but it's, um, you know, it's, it's a bit noisy. Um, you know, for example, down here, as, um, as, 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 right. but it's still, it's still good enough to work with. Absolutely. So we need, we need a, a 3D model built using, for example, rigid structure motion or laser, laser structure like whatever. And then you have to also make uh, a deformation model, which is saying, you know, as it deforms, what is the energy associated with its deformation? Okay. we're using that as a regularizer. Okay. And um, what we're doing is we're using a very generic um, regularizer that can work with multiple different objects. Okay. So we haven't tuned this per object. We, we're actually using the same one, which is um, which is quite simple. It's just saying, in general, as these objects deform, they don't stretch or shrink very much. So in that case, what kind of uh, object is not uh, the optimal uh, objects target? Objects which stretch a lot. Stretch a lot. Yeah. Elastic. Elastic, stuff. Yeah. yeah. And I must say, so all these objects, they're not that elastic. 
but I must say that problem is, is ill-posed, we believe. Right. Um, it's, it's generally not possible to uniquely reconstruct an elastic object given a monocular camera. So we're, we're kind of at the limits of what's doable. Okay, so uh, a tough question. For example, if you can you, for example, detect animal? You, 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 you scan a pet, like a dog or cat. Can you do that? Can we do a dog or cat? Yeah. Well, you, you have to use different... I, I would say that because they're quite textureless, you would then have to use a, a different cues. At the moment, I'm relying a lot on um, texture matching. For a dog or cat, you're not going to get that many texture matches, but what you will have is you'll have the occluding contours. Okay. okay. So um, what I've done is actually I extended this work to include occluding contours, um, and it's actually being presented in Mikai next week <laughs> because, uh -huh. uh, because I, I was doing it for medical data, um, and and that is actually using the occluding contours. So for dog or cat, um, it's certainly possible, uh, but you would definitely be using the occluding contours. So how about the human hand? Um, for me, I feel like the human hand. Someone also asked me about the face. Um, these are quite special objects because we know a lot about them. You can train a lot. Uh, uh, you know, the hand has a low-dimensional, you know, space that it operates in. It's got a skeleton. Um, you would use all that knowledge um, and have a different approach. Right. Uh, I would say for something like the hand, you would use a method which is really, really uh, focused on specialized the for that. Of the hand. Yeah. This is why I, I haven't really been tested with the hand. Too. Okay. It's because you should use it. I think you should use a different approach. Okay. But for objects which are deform in very arbitrary ways, that you can't really train a priori, like uh, like for example this rugby ball, which can just deform in so many arbitrary ways. It's really difficult to train beforehand. Uh, that's when this is suitable. Fantastic. So last question. So if we want to try some other 3D models as a template, yeah. can we do that with yeah, your yeah. Yeah, yeah. demo? Yeah. Uh, oh, um, yeah, I think so. I mean, if, you, uh, if, we, if we made one, we, we might be able to. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, so let's keep in contact. Yeah, yeah thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay.